So we're back this week once again to break down all the Japanese references in chapter 999. There aren't many here, but the ones we have are incredibly important, so let's get started. The first reference in this chapter comes in the name of the sake that Ace and Yamato exchange. The writing on it translates to Unaware Night Moon. While it could be reaching here, the wording is very similar to Toki's message from before her death. O oh, you, moon unaware of the dawn, if your wish is to come true, then cast nine shadows on the moodly night, woven of twenty years, and you shall know the brilliance of the dawn. Since the moon is also visible in the scene where the two are exchanging sake, I can't help but feel like Oda's hinting at something here. After all, this is also emphasized in the chapter's title, The Sake I Brewed While Waiting For You. This title actually derives from a Japanese poem about a person brewing sake that goes, The sake I brewed while waiting for you, in the fields of Anno, alone and drinking, without any to share with. But what sake symbolizes in the context of One Piece is something more than just an alcoholic drink. In One Piece, it has the connotation of the initiation of brotherhood, or friendship, a practice known as sakazuki in Japan. So in this case, could this be symbolizing Yamato waiting for Luffy to exchange sake with him in the same way he once did with Ace? Uh, not necessarily really to become a brother, but just to show their connection as friend, as you know, Nakama even. This not only ties into Yamato's later statement of this being something fated to be, but it also ties into the whole Toki prophecy of the night moon unaware of the coming dawn. There's definitely a lot to unpack here, but I definitely think that all of this is connected. While we're on this topic, let's also talk about Yamato mentioning that Luffy, Ace's brother, of all pirates, is the one that came to save Wano, something that has to be the work of fate, hinting that all of this is related to the will of D which could perhaps indicate even that the Will of D will be the big reveal in Chapter 1000. Now, there is a lot to say about this, and that's frankly too much to say in this video, so I'm thinking of making it into a separate video that I'll release during the break. I've already tackled many of these things I want to mention here in my analysis on my website, so you can check that if you're interested, but I want to give this its proper spotlight in its own video in the following week. Anyways, Blackbeard makes a small cameo in this chapter, mentioning that Ace wants to go after a big neck. Now, big neck in this case is, well, when translated literally, but going after a neck in Japanese means to go after someone's life, or more specifically in the context of One Piece, going after their bounty. To which Marco replies that Ace is not a big bounty hunter. This is actually a reference to Blackbeard's own plans, where he would later go after Luffy, though eventually, ironically enough, settling with Ace, in order to catch a big bounty and have the government acknowledge him as a Shichibukai. The chapter ends with Big Mom revealing that Kaido has eaten a mythological Zoan Dao fruit, being the Uo Uo Nomi, which quite simply translates to the fish fish fruit. The name Uo might sound like it breaks the two syllable rule for every devil fruit name, but you have to keep in mind that individual vowels are considered singular syllables in Japanese, so the name still fits the devil fruit naming convention. But why fish? Isn't Kaido a dragon? What do fishes have to do with dragons? And how is a simple fish a mythological Tao fruit? Well, as you might imagine, the answer does indeed lie in Japanese mythology, and particularly in the type of fish known as the koi. Though, like many aspects of Japanese mythology, this was something that was borrowed from Chinese mythology, much in the same way that koi were imported from China to Japan, uh, but basically all of this derives from an old Chinese fable about the koi that became a dragon. Once upon a time, a school of golden koi fish were swimming upstream the Huanghe, or the Yellow River, in mainland China. Many fish across the world attempt to climb waterfalls for a chance to return to a stream source, but no force proved greater than that of the Yellow Rivers, proving difficult for the koi to swim towards. Despite that, this beautiful koi, the cream of the crop of all fishes, with their skins glistening to the rays of the sun, kept pushing forward to reach the top of the river. And yet, 
At the end of their journey, they were faced by an unsurmountable waterfall. In the face of such an enormous task, a large part of the school of Koi decided to leave. They felt that the waterfall was truly impassable, and as such, they gave up and let themselves be carried back by the river's stream. However, the Koi that decided to stay behind refused to give up. They were determined to reach the top of the waterfall, and so they kept pushing forward, putting every fiber of their beings into climbing it. This proved to not be an easy task. Many of them kept falling down, and every time they'd make some progress, they would slip and fall all the way to the bottom of the waterfall, back at point zero. Things then took a turn for the worse, when a local tribe of demons noticed the Koi trying to desperately head up the waterfall. They laughed at their efforts at trying to do something so impossible and, to add injury to insult, used their powers to increase the height of the waterfall, making the struggle even more dauntless and downright unrealistic. So, even if they had originally perhaps some potential to reach the top, the sabotaging caused by the demons would make such an objective truly impossible. But impossible is not enough to stop some people, because there was one Koi that refused to give up. No matter how many times he fell down to the very bottom and was forced to restart from scratch, no matter how many times the demons would make the waterfall taller and harder to climb, he pushed onwards, he endured, and didn't let failure discourage him from pushing forward. The days became weeks, the weeks months, the months years, and the years decades. And yet, finally, after a hundred years, the Koi finally reached the top. The gods were impressed by such a display of determination and courage, and so decided to reward the Koi by allowing him to transform into a beautiful and majestic dragon. For all his struggles for all those years, the Koi was finally rewarded and became a creature of legend. And all those that thought it was foolish and impossible were left in awe at the majesty of this being, who had reached the very top by never giving up. The story of the Koi who became a dragon has a very clear theme, that no matter how dauntless a task may seem, no matter how impossible, if you do not give up, you can achieve it. No matter how impossible it may seem, no matter how many times you might fail, no matter how many times you might have to restart from zero, no matter how many people might laugh at you, and no matter how much people might legitimately try to sabotage you, as long as you persevere, you can accomplish anything you set your mind to. And as such, the Koi became a symbol of perseverance, and the imagery of a Koi turning into a dragon became commonly associated in Eastern mythology. And that is exactly why Kaido has the Uo Uo no Mi. Keep in mind, this is not a normal standard fish devil fruit. This is a mythological fruit, meaning that it has special supernatural properties, much like how Marcus Fruit, despite being a Zoan, has powers that no normal Zoan would ever be allowed to have. And so, it would seem that this devil fruit originally allows the user to transform into a fish, probably a koi fish, and after fulfilling certain requirements, which could be any series of things, though it could also potentially be climbing an actual waterfall, we don't really know yet, then this koi turns into a dragon. So, it pretty much is just a dragon drank fruit, just with extra steps. Instead of being a simple and straightforward mythological dragon dragon zoan, it's a mythological fish fish zoan, which after fulfilling certain requirements becomes a dragon just like the fish of myth. The cool thing here though is that this was actually very expertly set up and foreshadowed by Oda. There are several hints that he laid throughout the story to indicate this, to indicate that he didn't just have a normal dragon dragon fruit but the uo uo no mi. Clearest of all is his iconic laugh. <laughs> While this has often been written as wo, as in W-O, it can technically also be written as u-o, as in the uo uo no mi. 
Furthermore, the tattoo on Kaida's torso and arm looks exactly like the scales of a koi, even having the same golden color beneath the scales like the koi from the myth. We even had this myth previously referenced with all the hallway found at the entrance of Wano that allow one to climb into the country. It makes me wonder if there is some tie between this waterfall and the fruit itself. Something that is, however, odd is the fact that this is a fish fish fruit, implying that it's a dal fruit that allows one to swim through the ocean. I mean, after all, that would contradict the fundamental ideas of adult fruit as their bodies will freeze when in contact with water. This is likely why we really haven't seen many fish dell fruits, or any at all, the closest being the Sarasaranomi model axolotl, which was an amphibian who can survive underwater, though we never really saw Smiley interacting with the water. However, this is a mythological zoan, and furthermore, this is a fruit that Kaido ate at God Valley. Could it be that this fruit originates from God Valley? After all, it was implied to be an island tied to the Celestial Dragons, so them having a special devil fruit that breaks the boundaries of what devil fruits are supposed to be like isn't too far-fetched. Or maybe it's just some special properties due to being a mythological zoan. We really don't know, and all we can do at this point is speculate. But I'm sure that Oda will explain everything in due time. However, this could at the very least explain why Kaido can't just ground himself to kill himself if the fruit does allow him to breathe underwater. This would also explain why Kaido is considered to be the strongest creature on land, sea, or air, because this fruit could potentially allow him to swim through the ocean, walk through land in human form, and fly through the skies as a dragon. So, those are all the references in this chapter. Are you satisfied with Kaido being a fish now that you've heard the explanation, or do you still think it's a bit weird? Let me know, and I'll see you in a couple weeks from now once the big chapter 1000 drops, though I'll try to get something out during the break as well. See you then, thanks for watching!